Um, so LEAP is a point of sale application that's going to digitize every stage of the in-home sales experience. So this is going to include a variety of things from helping you to create documents like surveys or assessments. Uh, can import your digital measurements and help you generate estimates extremely quickly. It's a great uh, repository for your sales materials, like your pitch decks, manufacturers, brochures, before and after photos, um, a whole host of collateral materials that can be housed all in one location for easy access on the appointment. Uh, it also has the ability to help you calculate financing costs really quickly and easily at the kitchen table or the virtual kitchen table, as it were. Um, and submit your applications quickly and easily while you're on that appointment. And it also, kind of the, the backbone of the LEAP application is creating those customized and professor, professional uh, proposals and contracts for your customers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers today. So I'm really excited to welcome uh, Heidi and Karen, two great sales and marketing leaders in the retailing and remodeling industry. So uh, they both have some very impressive resumes, and I will do my best to, to do them justice here. Um, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to Heidi and Karen. So Heidi Ellsworth has worked in the roofing industry since 1993 and has held positions with Malarkey Roofing, Carlisle Construction Materials, and Eagle View Technologies. And Heidi is currently a partner with Roofers Coffee Shop and the owner of HJE Consulting, where she focuses on supporting marketing strategies, sales success, and content development for companies and associations within the roofing industry. She uh, is a contributor to many industry publications and currently consults with the National Roofing Contractors Association and the Roofing Alliance, while also serving on the board of Western State Roofing Contractors Association and the Roofing Technology Think Tank. I have to always say that slowly so I get it all <laughs> out there correctly, um, as well as National Women in Roofing, which she is a founder of. Uh, we also have Karen Edwards joining us today. Karen's been a marketing professional for uh, 30 years and has been focused on the past 20 years on marketing for the construction industry specifically. So Karen's background includes Carlisle Syntech and Eagle View, and she also owns her own consulting business. And I apologize, Karen, if I uh, if I mispronounce Casimir Group. <laughs> Close enough. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Um, where, where she works with roofing contractors and manufacturers, and she's also the editor of Roofers Coffee Shop as well. Karen also contributes to a variety of industry publications and is um, an active member of the National Women in Roofing and the Roofing Technology Think Tank as well. So thank you, uh, Karen and Heidi, so much for participating with us today. So um, I'll go ahead and turn this over to you, Heidi. Okay. Let me just get this over your way. Okay. Great. Hopefully everybody can see the screen just fine. Kelly, thank you so much. That was an awesome introduction. I think Karen and I both are kind of like, oh, we've been around a long time. So <laughs> um, I'd like to thank everybody for being on this webinar and most of all for Leap inviting us. Um, Karen and I have, and I think you saw this in some of the promotions, have written two books about sales and marketing for the roofing industry. And um, so we love presenting together and we have done this a lot and not as much since COVID. So this is really a special treat for us. So, it is, um, yeah. so my name is Heidi Ellsworth and I am the owner of HJE Consulting and also a partner and owner of Roofers Coffee Shop and Karen. Hi, Karen Edwards, and it's Casmer Group, um, so good job, Kelly, uh, and I am the editor at Roofers Coffee Shop and um, director for RT3, the Roofing Technology Think Tank, um, and just have a lot of, um, we have our hands in a lot of <laughs> places around the industry, so we're excited to, uh, to present this uh, topic today. Yeah, we, you know, we really are, and this is, this is something that is very near and dear to um, our hearts, for both Karen and I, in that um, the sales and marketing, I want to make sure that everybody can still see that. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, sales and marketing, we've both been involved for a very long time and um, both started out in marketing, but I was 
um, kind of intrigued and excited about sales. And so someone in our cre career, as Karen and I were working together, I was able to um, slide over into sales. So it really created this awesome opportunity for Karen and I, and she was in charge of marketing for at Carlisle, at Eagle View, and I was doing sales um, for the residential at Carlisle, and then also as and leading the sales effort in construction for Eagle View. So we were able to really see the power of bringing the two together, of really looking at sales and marketing, or smarketing, I think that's kind of cute, um, and talking about really what is happening there and how important it is to work together. So I. All right. So we're going to be sharing some stats um, because it's it's one thing for us to tell you this um, based on our experiences, but there has been research done that shows that um, when marketing and sales are aligned, you're going to make more money. Um, and this LinkedIn research noted that 58% of sales and marketing professionals professionals reported that collaboration delivers in improved customer retention and 54% said it positively contributed to financial performance. So commission makes more money, company makes more money, everybody's happy. Um, it's really important for marketing to support sales and understand their goals. That's one thing we say a lot, marketing supports sales marketing support sales that's our yes. job and to do that we've got to work together and understand because um, marketers are very creative people right and sometimes they get excited about something they have a great idea they head down that path and it's not what the sales team is looking for or what they need in order to do their job correctly and then marketing ends up attracting the wrong people and sales gets mad and said you're why don't i ever get any good leads from you yeah. um, it's because they're not on the same page um, you, you've got to have this, the, the understanding of the, the goals and you've got to have the buy-in of the sales team. You know, don't, you know, meet with them and then go develop something and, and initiate it without sharing back and forth. This is the campaign we're going to do. Here's how it's going to target. Here are the results, you know, we're hoping to get. Um, so marketing almost has to sell sales on their campaigns as well. Um, right. I think it's another thing to note, and Heidi, you've, um, been a proponent of this when when we hired people at uh, Carlisle, we put them through the contractor training program, and so they could understand the process, they could understand the installation, they could understand what a customer might experience when having work done. Um, we um, put everybody on a roof too, yeah. <laughs> send yeah, them to yeah. a job site. Help them understand because then they're going to be able to develop a better message about the kind of experience the customer is going to have. Right. Yeah, and I think that I think that is just so important in that really when you are looking at bringing on your sales and marketing to work together, they have to understand each other. That is just the bottom line is that if they don't understand each other, they're not going to be able to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm moving the slide forward there. There we go. Um, <laughs> that they're not going to be able to really understand what they're marketing. And so what will happen is, and this has happened, well, I've done it, I think Karen's done it, we've all been there. Um, but what will happen is all of a sudden you'll see something that you think is just super cool and you're marketing something that doesn't help the contractor. And then, or I'm sorry, doesn't help the salesperson talk to the contractor. And so then what happens is, you have one message coming from marketing and one message coming from your salespeople because your salespeople are going to go after the sale, whatever it is, whether the marketing is helping, helping or not. But what happens is you create a lack of trust. And so without trust, without creating that trust of a consistent message with sales and marketing from a company, you are actually hurting your company. And that's one of the things that people really kind of forget about is that it isn't just about, as this quote says from SuperOffice, companies with strong sales and marketing alignment can achieve up to 34% annual growth rate higher. You can also lose it. 
by, by losing trust. So we really talk about, and that's one of the things we're gonna talk about today is how do we bring these teams together and how do we really help them understand what each are doing, marketing sales, how they're helping each other and how to have a very consistent message. And that's one of the things that Karen does amazing is messaging and branding. And so she's gonna talk a little bit about that right now. Yeah, so um, what, I, I, what I've seen, here's what happens when marketing isn't, doing it for sales and not aligned and working together closely is sales people they'll go rogue right they'll mm -hmm. they'll develop their own sales materials and i've seen it happen not at one of the companies that were mentioned but it was with a client and not too long ago where he was developing his own sell sheets and you know his own powerpoint presentations and um I, the, 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 there was a breakdown in communication of you know marketing felt that um, why would you even need this piece? That's not really important to our business right now. We're, we think we should focus on this. And what needs to happen there to fix that is the two need to talk and marketing needs to understand, well, why do you need that? How are you using it? How is it helping you sell more of this product? And once all of those factors are understood, then they can work together to create the right materials that are needed for the use in the marketplace. Um, it's really important that the company look, the colors, the pieces all are consistent. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, a little later in, in the presentation. But yeah, it does happen. And I mean, look at the numbers here. Sales and marketing alignment can in boost your closing rates 67% better. And uh, in the home improvement industry, uh, you know, you hear a lot of different numbers, roofing and uh, you know, average close rates are about 30%. So imagine what doubling the close rate could do for your business. Yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive. And I, I, I just, you know, to reiterate what Karen's saying too, we've seen this time and time again. And in fact, we had a situation where I had just recently gone out into sales working residentially and Karen was in charge of this whole line, this brand of marketing, I mean, of residential products for Carlisle. And we kind of learned it all over again because here I was with some experience and I thought, oh, I might go rogue. I might go out there and just kind of do my own thing. And Karen's like, hey, remember, remember, this is not how we do things because in, in sales mentality, you just want to get the clothes. You want to get done. You want to get out there, which is good. But when you lose, if you don't bring your marketing with you and if the marketing doesn't understand what you're doing, you're really not going to that it, it's not going to happen the way you want it to. And so really when you look at developing this next step, that's key in that you want to have a team. You want to work together collaboratively on this marketing program. So what we're going to step into now is kind of a little bit of how to how to develop a marketing program, a plan, a marketing plan, and then also how to build that team um, collaboration and buy-in because without the buy-in, you're really not gonna go too far. Um, so for all the folks out there who are marketing, um, this is really gonna be kind of how to start putting that plan together. And for the owners out there, for the sales teams, this is something you should be actually asking of your marketing folks and you should be talking to them about. So it's, it's never one way, it's always a two-way street. So the first step is to create that team, that leadership team. And what you want to do is you want to look at obviously the ownership of the company and then you want to look at your whoever's in charge of sales you want to also have whoever's in charge of operations very important because if your sales and marketing team are selling uh maybe they're going to be selling tile roofs but operations hasn't had the training to put on tile roofs that's very simple but it can happen those kind of things all of a sudden now not only are you marketing the wrong thing and selling the wrong thing because your operations can't do it there's your loss obviously of revenue and profit so you need to make sure everyone's on the same page so at the table sales marketing operations i always like to have finance there because it's um, frustrating when you do a lot of planning and put everything together and then finance says e not going to happen so get the buy-in get them there and then obviously ownership and what you're going to see is, I mean, even look at this, only 8% of companies have strong alignment between their sales and marketing departments. You can be that different one. Um, not only having the alignment between sales and marketing, 
but having the alignment with the company overall and really taking advantage of that and working everybody in the boat paddling the same direction. So, and as you get going, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at having something established. And that's where the marketing plan comes in. And Karen is going to take us through that. Yeah. Um, a plan is, is, a, is a roadmap, basically. And, and to get started on your marketing plan, you want to take the information, what you learned in that stage that Heidi was just talking about, where you brought everybody together and you've clearly defined the goals you know, the, the revenue targets, um, the, the products, the, the target markets, and compile that information, and that becomes your marketing plan. And statistics, I always have a tough time saying that word, show that um, when you document your strategies, this is a crazy number, you have a 538% chance, greater chance of being successful. So that's what a marketing plan is for. Um, you should have your company positioning statement, know what markets you're going to go after, um, define your customer. If you're a home improvement contractor, do you have a certain um, home value, uh, target demographic, income? Those are all um, things that are going to describe your ideal customer and create little personas for them. What are, what are their pain points? How does your product solve it? What are the key elements for selling to them? Um, goals, obviously, yearly goals. Um, your brand. Your brand is really important, and it's important that your entire team understand the brand and that message. And we are going to talk a little bit more in depth about that as we move through the rest of the webinar. So I'll save that. Um, it's a lot more than just a logo. Um, there's yeah. a lot that goes into it. it it's who your company is. Um, and then you, you want to take a look and think about the marketing tools. What tools are you going to need to attain the goals um, that you've established with the rest of your leadership team? Um, you might need to consider new technologies. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about CRM systems. They play an important role. You may need to implement an email client. Um, you may even have some pay-per-click campaigns that you're going to need to implement. So that might need some special software there as well or for your social media. And marketing automation. Um, marketing automation sounds like it's high level, but really it's just um, feeding information to leads. We talk um, often about, uh, and I'm guilty of this in my past life, um, of going to a trade show you talk to somebody, so you're at a home show, right? And you talk to a customer, um, you get their information, scan their badge, whatever, and, and you come back from the show and you've got 50 leads in a spreadsheet. And you say, oh, I can't wait to give this to sales. And you say, look at all these leads from the show. And then you don't hear anything. And a couple of weeks go by and we're like, wait, did sales even call these people? What's going on, right? Um, right. And, and it was it, you get in this frustrating cycle of, oh my gosh, I bring in these leads and sales never calls them. Well, they're not ready to talk to sales yet. And that's where marketing automation comes in. It gives you the opportunity to feed them content, nurture them with information and get them to a point where they're ready to talk to sales. Um, and that's a, an agreed upon point by both parties. But um, yeah, so plans are important. And the most important thing about your marketing plan is it's just a plan and plans can change. I right. guarantee that when people put their 2020 marketing plans together last fall, they had no idea what was coming in March, right? <laughs> Those plans had to change drastically. Um, you know, we did a lot of shifting and a lot of changing and events were canceled and um, there were things that, you know, we had to be flexible with. And I think that's really important to keep in mind as you put your plan together. Also have a high level summary of that plan because you may have that leadership team, they're, they're going to want to know what the plan is, um, but they're not going to want to read into the nitty gritty and into the details. So give them a, a one page overview. You know, these are the things we're going to focus on. Here's how we're going to do it. And here's what we hope to accomplish. Yeah, that is, that is, I, I, and you know what, Karen and I, we, we worked on this on marketing book together, a marketing plan. And that book, I've always been pretty happy with what we did, Karen, because it takes you step by step by step. So these bullet points that Karen is talking about right now, you can actually take this book that um, you're all going to, or some of you are going to get, I hear working with Kelly, and um, you can actually take your leadership team through each 
section <clears throat> and work together on how to put that plan together. And so then you have not only the plan, but you have the workbook that you've kind of used and you've taken notes with. So it's something that is ongoing. It's not a one and done. And that's really where we kind of have to, again, bring in that team concept. 46% um, of marketers with mature leads management processes have sales teams that follow up on more than 75% of marketing generated leads. That's huge. And that's from Forrester. They do all kinds of research. Um, really what it comes down to is, and I can't tell you if we, if we had a dollar, if every time we've heard this in our career, you know, those sales guys aren't following up on leads. Um, and, and it's not, half the time it's because the leads weren't right. Um, or there wasn't good communication or they weren't mature enough, like Karen was saying before. So this really shows what can happen working together with leads and getting the right ones coming in. Um, and it's really important that the sales and marketing team, along with the company as a whole, really understands your combined goals. I think everyone, I mean, one of the things, um, I'll give you another example. When Karen and I were working at Eagle View, I was heading up sales and Karen was heading up marketing. Karen sat right in the middle of the sales team. I think someday she wanted to pull her hair out, but the <laughs> sales team was right there. She knew their goals. She knew what was going on. We were able to talk back and forth. And um, we were also, you know, and this is sometimes a little controversial, but Karen was incentivized with the sales team. So if we, the sales team won, marketing won marketing one, the sales team one. So as you're looking at that and developing your marketing pipelines, your sales quotas, they should be connected. That's that whole marketing pipeline equals sales quota. You want all of that to work together and then have the visibility. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but what are the analytics? What's happening? Is it working? And if it isn't, like Karen says, you got to move, you got to be able to switch, you got to be able to get to something different. And when both all groups are compensated and bonused and have the same um, financial incentives, it really can make a huge difference for where they're going. Don't you think, Karen? I do. Yeah, I do. And, you know, it's interesting sitting right there in sales, it goes back to, you know, going through the training and, um, you know, learning uh, and going on a roof, um, sitting there listening to the sales team, you hear the things that they're saying, uh, especially after they hang up from a call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, ah, and you learn from that. And we do that at Eagle View. You, um, we sat beside customer service and listened to phone yeah. calls um, yeah. from contractors calling in. So we could hear what, what are contractors frustrated with or what are their pain points or what are their issues. And then we can work to um, address those and make it a better experience for them. So yeah, that was really important. Same, same, right. and it's the same whether it's a building owner, a homeowner, uh, you know, where we were working with contractors, it doesn't matter. It's still the same thing of having um, your sales, your customer service, your marketing, all working together because you can learn so much from each other. And really oh, yeah. looking at the, um, what, how that profit of the company works, what's profitable, what isn't, and aligning goals. And I'll turn that over to Karen. Yeah, it's, it's true. So often um, marketing is not a part of the financial discussion. So they don't understand what the goals are. Um, they don't understand what's profitable or what's not. Um, you know, the, marketing wants to help sales close profitable deals, but in order to be able to do that, they have to understand the department goals, the company financials. Um, Maybe, you know, there's a, a cool product or service that's fun, but it only contributes a small percentage toward overall revenue. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to spend a lot of time on it, although, or it might have a low profit margin. But then on the other hand, the company may have goals to grow a certain product or service. So it's important for sales to understand that marketing is going to be focusing a little bit more on this in addition to helping, helping them um, achieve their goals. So it's, it's, you've got to be part of the discussion. And, you know, here's a stat for you. It, it says it costs 10% or more of revenue per year when they're not aligned and the processes aren't in place and the technologies aren't in place. Um, you're not going to do as well in the, in the long run. Yeah. 
and, 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 and it can be, it's something that can really be watched. It's, it's something that can, um, you can see nowadays in with what is going on because the, um, line of sight into closing sales. I mean, just look at what we're talking about with LEAP, you know, and that's why it's so exciting to be here today. What they do in the sales process to help with technology and automation and all of that is, is phenomenal. And this is one of the things, you know, I'll, I'll kind of speak from the view of Roofers Coffee Shop now, being an owner of Roofers Coffee Shop, I've got to watch these analytics every day, every month. And Karen works with me as the editor to kind of see what are people responding to? What do they like? What do they not like? What do customers, what, you know, we have full dashboards with analytics for our um, partners, for all of the manufacturers and advertisers out there so that they can deliver the right content. It is all, it's the same thing closing a sale. You need to be able to deliver the right products, what they need, listen, and you need to be able to have that coming in the marketing materials and in the sales materials. And so really, I can't stress analytics enough. And it's, it's kind of an overused word sometimes, but having that line of sight into how the sales are closing, what's working, what's not working, and really following those analytics I think makes all the difference. And it should be a discussion between sales and marketing and then that leadership team, bring them back in. How's the marketing plan working? How's the sales working? And what is, where are we and do we need to move or make some changes? And analytics will tell you that. Um, when some of you may be saying, what kind of analytics? So Karen, I mean, from a website yeah. perspective, um, well, analytics and data are so powerful. Um, you you can look at your data and you can see, hmm, you know what? This salesperson is closing more of these kinds of deals. He's yeah. better at it. And this salesperson is better at these jobs. So that when you get a lead, you can assign it to the right salesperson. Yes. And that helps improve their closing rate too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look at the numbers right there on that on the screen with, you know, when you when you are aligned and you're looking at that data, you're going to have faster three-year growth, 24%, and 27% fast, faster profit. Um, yeah. That's a big deal. It makes, it makes a huge difference. And so really understanding and knowing your customers, that is also, and so you need the technology, you need the things in place, and Karen's going to talk about that right now. Yeah, customer relations management software. You hear, you hear it called CRM. Um, it, it's so critical to understanding what your customers are doing, what content they're interacting with, and keeping track of, of their journey through the, the life cycle. 80% um, of marketing leads never convert into sales. And often it's because they're not being nurtured. And being nurtured, I'll go back to that home uh, show example. Uh, you talk to the customer there, they're not ready to talk to sales, but marketing needs to take over and send them a thank you email. Thanks for stopping by our booth and offer them a piece of content. Maybe it's an article about how to choose the best siding colors for your home style. Um, maybe it's a link to an online visualization tool so they can upload a photo of their home and play with different window styles and change colors. Um, and and the, the CRM allows you to see what they're doing. You'll see if they opened the email, you'll see if they clicked the link, um, you'll be able to see what their interest is. Um, then always, always offer them content and always offer them obviously the option to contact me for a, an appointment, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies forget the call to action. There needs yeah. to be a call to action um, with everything. So don't forget that. And then um, based on what that customer is doing, the next step might be a week later, um, you're going to send them a postcard. We still have some people sending postcards out, or maybe you're going to um, have a, a new blog, an article on your company blog um, that offers important information about financing. And you'll send that out to help ease their fears over spending, the, uh, you know, a large sum of money on a home improvement project. And then once they reach a certain point of interaction with you, then they get, they called a marketing qualified lead and they get sent to sales. But you work with sales ahead of time to set up that process. Mm -hmm. um, how, you know, at what point are we going to consider this person 
um, ready to talk to sales because we don't want to waste sales time if someone's not ready. Um, Heidi's going to talk about that being a time waster, <laughs> fun, yeah. revenue yeah. revenue buster, time waster for sure. Um, yeah, so the, the customer relations management, there you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. If you're a smaller contractor, there are some companies out there that have free versions. Um, HubSpot is one that's uh, pretty robust and can do a lot of things, but it does have a scaled down version that's free that will allow you to get started in some of this stuff. Other, uh, I think Zoho might have a free one. Um, Job Nimbus, they partner with Lead. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. They're a very helpful tool for, you know, keeping track of understanding your customers, what they're doing, what interactions they had with your people, and keeping track of the estimates and if, if, if a lead closed. And the, everybody needs to have logins. Marketing needs to be able to access it. Sales needs to be able to access it. And anytime um, any interaction is happening with that customer, it needs to be noted in there. And the integrations, for instance, with Leap and Job Nimbus, if you are using Job Nimbus and you, your team is using Leap, they're going to talk to each other, right? So mm -hmm. you're not going to have to enter data twice. Whatever happens in Leap <laughs> doesn't yeah. stay in Leap. It goes into Job yeah. Nimbus, <laughs> right? Um, so it's really important um, if you don't have a system and you're choosing one to make sure that it can talk back and forth. Um, with your yeah. other programs that you're using. Well, and, and to have everyone involved in inputting their information, what they're finding out, and that's kind of what we're talking about on this next slide, is that, you know, you need to know your customers. You need to, number one, sales, build a relationship, get to know your customers. Well, it's really interesting. HubSpot that Karen just mentioned says 50% of sales time is wasted on unproductive prospecting. I can attest to that. And it is very frustrating when you're going after leads or following up on leads that have nothing to do with what you're trying to sell. Or maybe they're going to buy the stuff you, you know, that you have no margins on. And it's just not a good fit. Um, but when sales and marketing work together and they understand their customers using a CRM, and a lot of these CRMs will also link to LinkedIn, which I am a huge fan of LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is just one of the best sales tools there is. And so getting, getting into LinkedIn, understanding the customers, and that's where sales and marketing can really work together, like delivering the right content into LinkedIn so that it gets the interest of the people, that the customers you're looking for. And then the salespeople can start engaging them. Um, I've seen some salespeople who are just amazing at that. They could never break through. They never got the relationship. But marketing was able to get the person interested through some content, then they were be able to start talking to them, build common interests, find out what they both like and what they're both interested in, and they were able to get past that gatekeeper and into the decision maker. It works. Um, and so it's something about really understanding the technology, everybody putting in their information into a CRM, and then going out and really using the social media and the connections that are out there to, together to bring in the right customers. So it's a different way of thinking, kind of different from the past. Trade shows are great, they're awesome, but you've got to nurture. You've got to now find out what are they interested in? What, what, what's that customer? And prospecting, a lot of prospecting can be done by marketing. That's a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a great B2B to C or B2B model um, with LinkedIn, with your, your homeowners and B2C. Um, Facebook is gonna be huge for you as well. Um, yes. It, it, yes. It's, it's relatively inexpensive to advertise on Facebook and boost posts, and that's where you're going to want to have good content. Yeah. And you can get yeah. a lot of that content from your manufacturers. Um, you know, they provide the tools um, because they want the homeowners to buy too. So yeah, don't forget about LinkedIn. Don't <laughs> forget <on> Facebook. And <laughs> Facebook. And you know what? I'm th Karen, thank you so much because we really do see that. We see a lot of commercial. If you're doing more commercial work. We're seeing it more on LinkedIn. If you're doing residential work, it doesn't matter anywhere on the home. Um, that definitely is more Facebook and Instagram is starting to come up too. A lot of pictures coming that direction. So staying on top of those definitely. different mediums is important. Communicating back and forth with your sales and marketing again so that people aren't going rogue on social media, but that they're really working together to put the right messaging and branding out is very important too. Um, yeah. And that kind of leads us to the website and really looking at how that works. So Karen? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if you're, there you go. You were frozen for a minute, so I didn't know if the slide was going to advance, mm -hmm. but the, it's really about first impressions, right? First impression is critical. And website is typically one of the places where a first impression happens. It takes half a second for people to form an opinion about your website. As soon as that page pops up, um, they're going to be like, okay, this looks good. Uh, and you've all seen bad websites. <laughs> I mean, it is a little subjective, but it needs to provide a good experience for the customer. Um, and it's not just build it and leave it sit. A website has to constantly be fresh and adding fresh content, updating. That's why a blog is really very important because the more you have rele relevant content on your website, for your target audiences, the higher you're going to rank organically in Google search results. So that's why blogs are great. Even if it's just once a month that you put something up, um, that would be probably the minimum. First impressions can be made on social media too. Um, Heidi, we just talked about LinkedIn and Facebook. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice idea. Um, when we were at Eagle View, we made a LinkedIn package, so to speak, for um, the sales team. And we said, here's your cover image here's this, you know, here we gave them guidelines on how to use it because that quickly, um, they, you, they're going to make a decision and um, it, it, it's going to stick with them. And 70, there was a study done, one of our, this source, same source that said about the half a second, 75% of consumers admit making judgment, judgments on a company's credibility based on their website design. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it doesn't have to, it, it can cost, several thousand dollars to have a website, but there's ways as well to kind of get started small with templates and like WordPress, um, yeah. which is free to use. They like offer templates you could purchase pretty cheaply. There's Squarespace, there's Wix, um, there's simple websites, uh, website building tools that exist um, that make it easy and, and don't hold you captive to having to understand how to write code and make cool things happen on your site um, to make the experience better for your customer. Um, but it's also important, I think Heidi's going to talk about this, about having the right, um, having it like, like being mobile responsive, right? Right. Uh, over 50% of people are going to visit your website from a mobile device. Right. 50%. That's really? what we have on Reaper's Coffee Shop. 50% come yeah. in on mobile. So we know it's, this is what's happening. Um, I also, really want to say again, I know we've said this so many times, but um, as a salesperson, I use our website every single day. So I'm talking now about Roofer's Coffee Shop. I'm and I'm I do sales for Roofer's Coffee Shop. So I'm using this every single day. I'm going through the site. I'm sharing things. I'm talking to people about it. And that's exactly what's happening in roofing companies. The salespeople are using either on their iPad, they're using the technology, and we're going to talk, I'm going to go to that, but they're using this website and the homeowners or building owners are using these websites to even first get interested. So sitting down with your sales team again and going through the website as a marketing person and really understanding what they need on the website and what they're using and what their customers are really like is so important and it's not one and done. It needs to be done quarterly. You need to continue to go through their needs so that the marketing, so all that um, online presence is supporting your sales efforts. And mm -hmm. like Karen said, it's not just um, online, it's mobile. And with mobile, there is so much out there. And just the fact that we're sitting here with Leap, who's a leader in this, um, and putting information in the hands to be able to talk to homeowners, to be able to talk to the customers, um, nearly eight in 10 customers would stop engaging with content that didn't display well on their device. So I worry about this every day. I'm just like, oh my gosh, can they see it all right on the phone? Is it okay on the tablet? Are things rendering right? Um, so really working, having, you know, listening to your salespeople. If they say, hey, we, we're not able to show this, then you got to fix it. You got you to gotta work through it. Um, and also finding the different technologies that are out there, visualization tools, 3D tools, roof measurements. There's so many great things that can become part of your sales proposals and start part of your sales plans. Um, 
that marketing can work on to make sure it's branded with your company, working with your manufacturers, technology companies, and distributors. It is, um, that's key, it's key to success, I think, on this ever-growing mobile front. But sometimes you gotta also look at what, not sometimes, you always have to be looking at the consistency, right, Karen? Oh yeah, yeah, it, it's really important. Um, it, you're, you, to present that professional brand, um, it, it's been shown to increase revenue by 33%, 33%. Um, so that, that just means, does everything look okay? Is it branded correctly? Is the use of your logo, is it the right colors? Um, every company should have brand standards that say, you know, this is our, this is our color blue because colors all have um, RGB numbers and CMYK numbers. And that's important because if you print something on one printer and then you switch your printers, um, if they're not using the same colors, your stuff's going to look different. Um, and it leaves a, a poor impression in the, the consumer or potential customer's eye. That's the reason why sales, we don't like it when salespeople go rogue and make their own materials yeah. because they don't use the right colors. It's the wrong shade. It looks brand, it looks bad. And we're doing this on Roofers Coffee Shop right now, right, Heidi? We, we mm -hmm. have um, sell sheets for our different programs at, along with our media kit. And we, I think, Heidi, you printed them out, right? Yeah. And laid them side by side and went, these don't look the same. There's not it's a consistent, not consistent. feel. Yep. Yeah. And so we're just doing that right now, updating. So it's we're even though we know sometimes <laughs> we fall victim to, you know, and we got to stop ourselves and say, okay, wait, we need to stop and, and change this and, and do it correctly. And so the, the brand that you present visually then um, translates into the brand that your employees are going to present to potential customers and the rest of the world. And Heidi, you've got some some points to talk about with brand ambassadors. Yes, I do. And and just to just for those salespeople who might be out there right now who are listening to this and kind of going, yeah, yeah, whatever. I can print stuff off my own printer. Um, it is proven, and we talked about this at the beginning, that this is subliminal and it creates distrust when there's a different message, different look, different brand coming from the marketing department and the sales department. So this is really important. It may seem a little uh, fluffy at times, but we have seen it over and over again. And that's why really talking to all, using the employees, you know, we talked about, and I shouldn't say using, I don't mean that in a bad way, but what I'm really talking about is you got to include, you got to be inclusive of everyone. Um, every single person in your company is going to be able to be that brand ambassador for you. They're going to be able to talk about your company, but they're only going to be able to talk about it in the right way if they get the information. So for, uh, part of that marketing plan and a big part of that marketing plan is the communication of what your plans on and what you're doing. And through that marketing plan, I, you know, you're just, you're, you want to look at the culture of your company. Does it fit? Does it fit the culture of your company? Are your employees going to be able to carry this messaging? Are they going to be able to live that brand? Um, are they, are your customers, does it sync with them? Is that what they're looking for? And is that where you want to be? And so when you, um, as you can see here, aligning departments can help generate 209% more revenue from marketing. So if it's not aligned, if it's not aligned with your culture, if it's not aligned with your employees and what they're doing and the different departments, and if it definitely is not aligned between sales and marketing going to your customers, then it's not just the 209% more that you're going to generate, but it's how much are you losing? And that's really the bottom line because you will lose. So communication, building the plan together, monitoring the plan together, and then communicating the plan together so that you have success really is what matters. And I'm going to have Karen kind of bring us home because we have this one chart that we always talk yeah. about that we both think really sums yeah. it up. I just want to mention one thing real quick, Heidi, um, about, you know, developing everything together, working together and aligning. Yeah. Um, remember everybody, because we made a mistake one time where sales and marketing <laughs> came up with this great promotion and we blasted it out to our customers and our customer service 
started getting phone calls asking about the promotion and they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. So it's important to, once you've developed this great plan, be sure to share it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this, this is this chart that you're looking at right now. We love this chart because it's, it's the, it's the customer life cycle from lead to becoming a promoter of your brand and your company. And you've got a bunch of strangers out there and your marketing's job is to attract them and bring them in. And that's through blogs, social media, search engine optimization, um, and then turn them into visitors. They come, they come to the website. And because they come to the website, our job is to capture them, convert them, right? Uh, have an offer, have a, a form. Um, remember the call to action. So many small businesses, uh, they, they forget to ask them to do something. Um, landing pages are great too for specific um, activities. And then, you know, while you're nurturing them and giving them information, you're turning them into leads, which then they go to sales and the sales team works with them to close them, turning them into customers. And then the operations produces a fantastic experience um, with the installation and you, you know, see them at events, you they follow each other on Facebook and let, you know, provide them with valuable information and they, they become promoters. Mm -hmm. um, your company is not on that next door app. I highly recommend getting on there. Um, that homeowners and neighborhoods use it. And if, if someone has gone through this, um, flow with your company and someone goes out on next door and says, I'm looking for a window replacement company, any recommendations? And neighbors are going to hop on there and say, call this company. It was a great experience. That person has become your promoter. That's your goal. Yeah, that is. And I tell you what, yeah. when that happens, and this is always, you know, the sweet spot, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to create that, that, junction of sales and marketing working together to create those promoters and it it honestly cannot happen if they're separated um it just you know they might just love their salesperson but then they see something they don't like on social media or something you know it's like the two have to work together to really create those strong promote promoters that are gonna gonna be lifetime customers basically and do the referrals for you and help bring back more people into your company as you move forward so that's marketing and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we um we truly believe in this as you can tell we're a little passionate and we love it and we also um, wrote some books about it. So these um, are available. Um, Leap is going to be giving some away. They're available on Amazon. They're available on Rupert's Coffee Shop. So Kelly, there's our, there's our webinar for the day. <laughs> oh, Kelly, I uh -oh. think you're on mute. <laughs> So I was, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for all that great information. I think we've got a lot of uh, great things for people to think about, uh, you know, some recommendations on, you know, how to approach um, getting your sales and marketing teams to work together and what the real value is behind that and what that will do for your company. So I think that was very, very fantastic. Um, so we are going to open things up for some questions. So if you've got any um, any out there in the audience, feel free to drop those in. We've got a couple rolling in. Um, I did mention earlier that we were going to have a special promotion for everyone on the webinar. So I'll just real quickly let me share with you what that is. Um, okay. So we've got a couple of copies, um, as Heidi had mentioned, of Karen and Heidi's latest book, that's Building a Marketing Plan for Roofers Contractor, Roofing Contractors. Um, so we're going to be giving away those to uh, the attendees of the webinar today. Um, and we also have a special offer from, from LEAP uh, for the attendees of this webinar today. So um, we're going to be giving away two months of our LEAP Pro uh, subscription for free. Um, so what's involved there is just a, a, a quick 30 minute consultation with one of our uh, consultants there. Um, you'll get a, a kind of an evaluation of your sales process and like a walkthrough of what LEAP is in, in much greater detail than we covered today. Um, so if you're interested in either both of those options, feel free to check off those boxes there and we will be reaching out to get that set up. Okay. Can they select those, Kelly, if they want both? Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, yes, perfect. absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. You'll see another one of these options pop up in a survey after the webinar as well. So don't worry if you uh, didn't get to check off that box there. You will have another opportunity. Um, and I will also let me just share my screen real quick. Um, and I also wanted to display this marketing at Leaps to Digital uh, email address. That does go directly to me. So if you want to take advantage of the offer afterwards, um, or if you think of any additional questions that we won't address here in the next few minutes, feel free to reach out there. Um, so with that, I'd like to jump into the Q&A section. We do have a couple of questions that have come in from the audience. Uh, so the first question coming in from Sandra, uh, what are some key analytics or KPIs that you would lo recommend looking at to judge the success of your marketing effort? Karen, you want to start? Uh, well, I would, uh, honestly, I would start with um, if you're doing Google uh, pay-per-click campaigns, um, your Google analytics are going to be um, pretty good indicators of your, um, because Google Analytics has so much information in there. Um, you can set goals, um, measure conversions. Um, so you're going to have to really, like Heidi said earlier, that the data is so important to, to look at. Um, obviously, number of leads. How, what, what are the number of leads? And you can kind of work backwards to say, all right, if I want to do X amount in revenue this year, and my closing rate is 35%, I'm gonna have to generate how many leads to get 35% of them at an average sale of $10,000 to hit X revenue goal. So if you're not generating that number of leads, then you need to, to make changes and, and to try some different things. Um, Heidi, what do you have to add there? Yeah, and I would watch, I, along with Google Analytics, and you're going to see this in Google Analytics, but kind of watch the interest within your website and your social media. So Google won't be on your social media, but where are you getting high impressions? And more important, where are you getting high clicks? What are people's engagement? Are they sharing the articles? Are they looking at different things? Because you can, I, and, and I just see a lot of kind of blase information out um, the same kind of articles on roofing and people love to see what is happening with their neighbor right what's happening what is that really cool roof what what are they doing with the siding and what are they doing with the windows sharing those kind of things and really talking about the products and how it can help them solving problems is always so important and then watch your analytics to see what are people engaging with are they sharing it with other, you know, you'll see them say, hey, George, check this out. You know, you see this all the time on Facebook. And that is a great way to kind of be able to really look at the success of what the content you're putting out and the marketing. And then uh, with what um, Karen's talking about, too, is, you know, it's all about qualified leads. If you're not getting the qualified leads and you're not talking to your sales team and they're not able to close those leads at the right you know, what they want for profit and revenue, then you got to look at a different strategy. You might be in the wrong neighborhoods. You might be, in, you know, going after the wrong demographics. Um, and all of that you can kind of look at on your Facebook and your Google Analytics also and see then, you know, the demographics of the people who are following you. And maybe that con then now you can go back and change the content to start hopefully attracting like from our chart, the right people. Yeah, I think it's important, too, if you are doing pay-per-click campaigns, to look at your cost per lead. You know, the home improvement industry is, is got a, a typically higher cost per lead um, than many other industries, and that can vary depending on the geographic location um, where you're located. So it, it's important to do a little bit of research on that. And if your cost per lead is really high and you're not getting as many clicks, then it is time to maybe change some wording, um, change your ads. Uh, change some keywords, add negative keywords to, so you're not showing up when it's not relevant to people in their searches. And maybe even looking at some of the more traditional ways with COVID, you have more people in their homes now, and it may some of this may go back to um, a postcard in the mail, or it may um, go back to a good old phone call. I mean, it, you just don't know, or that local newspaper, you know, maybe getting more with the cause marketing in the local newspaper. It's, you kind of got to be really flexible right now watching it. And so when you're asking about analytics for success, the other thing I would really is, 
talk to that receptionist or whoever is taking the incoming calls. What are they hearing from the customers who are calling? How are they hearing about you? Track that every single day because mm -hmm. and that's traditionally been a sales thing, but it's really a marketing thing because <laughs> we need to know how people are hearing about us and what's successful. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and I think that kind of segues into another question we've got very nicely uh, coming in from Sean. Uh, so in light of COVID, what has changed really for sales and marketing teams uh, with the onset of COVID and, and the social distancing piece? Um, well, a good I, question. That's a good ahead, I, I can kind of just start from, and I'm going to bring this from Roofer's Coffee Shop perspective. Um, since COVID has started, we have seen our numbers increase drastically. Um, we are trending up in a way that I have never seen before. And so now, of course, that's all of you contractors coming to our site, Roofer's Coffee Shop, to find out what's going on. But it's the same thing for you. Homeowners are looking online for solutions. They're at home. They, um, you know, <laughs> they're working at home. They're teaching at home. They're doing everything at home. They're looking around. What can I fix? And so I think just really evaluating your digital presence, your website, your social media. Are you putting the safety? And I'm going to let Karen take this next section too, because she does this all the yeah. time with instructors, but really that evaluation yeah. is important. Yeah, evaluate um, your digital presence and make sure you have messaging on your website right away about COVID-19. And, and what are you doing? What are your, that we have policies in place um, we're following CDC recommended guidelines. We offer a uh, video appointments so that no one has to come to your home. Maybe you're using Eagle View or maybe you're using Hover so that you don't need to send somebody to the home um, to do measurements and that maybe um, you can tell them it's contact free um, until we're there to do the work. Um, and if, if you're doing exterior work, then you, there's no need to even go in the home. Um, but if you are going inside for any home improvement inside, then, you know, our, we'll, we will wear masks. We will, um, you know, clean after ourselves. We're sanitizing our work, our work um, place at the end of every day before we leave. Um, and, you know, that, that it's very important to communicate. Customers are looking for it, but they're also a little bit um, hesitant, and it's, it's important to reassure them. Um, and I, we've seen a couple contractors that I work with have definitely gotten more um, video and yeah. email and, yeah, through c digital communications. It's, it's really shifted. Yeah, and... Seen. And really, I think the other thing too is as a roofing contractor, you know, continually continuing to learn how to build that relationship through online, through this, through the video right now. How am I building a relationship with you? And that means taking, you know, still taking the time to get to know them, ask the questions, understand the pain points. Um, and I think to Karen's viewpoint one of the most important things is our home is our sanctuary right now it's the one place that we're safe and so having total respect for that and helping to make that that home even safer is one of the reasons the roofing industry is still doing really well um and we say all really well but it's doing well um because that home is sacred right now so as long as your marketing sales and marketing team are treating it that way it's going to really that's that message is going to help them engage um, more digitally. Absolutely. And I think that's a fantastic message right there. <laughs> um, you know, treating your home, that your home is your safe space, take it, you know, um, you want to keep building on that. And I think that's a great message for um, for all all sides of the interior, exterior home remodeling industry. Um, so, so great messaging tidbit <laughs> on that one. Um, I do want to be cognizant, we're at the top of the hour, so I want to be uh, cognizant of everyone's time on the call. Um, so, uh, Heidi, Karen, any closing words before we wrap up for the day? Um, I, I'm just going to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you for attending. We hope it was helpful. Yeah, and I want to thank Leap for being a partner and being part of Rufus Coffee Shop. Um, we really value your partnership. We value on there, and you guys bring such great content constantly to the coffee shop. So I would really, um, you know, recommend this audience to visit and see what you guys are doing there because it's really cool. Thank you very much.
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you both for your time and for being with us today. And thanks to everyone on the call. Definitely check out Roofer's Coffee Shop if you haven't. There's a lot of great content and info from all around the industry um, to check out on there. So uh, definitely recommend the visit there if you haven't already. Um, so with that, again, uh, feel free to reach out if you think of any questions or things after the webinar today at marketing at leapsdigital.com. will find me, and I'll be happy to help with any questions or comments afterwards. Um, and we will have a short survey popping up as you exit the webinar today, so I'd appreciate just a, a quick moment to fill that out. If there's any topics you'd be interested in hearing about for future webinars, um, we're all ears. We'd love to, to hear what would be of interest to you. So thanks again, everyone, for your time, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.